just to come and look at it was there. So it worked out though. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were going to say it was just like some random person's house and they're like, the, the one is next door that you're looking for. This is my house. Why are you standing back? Nobody else was looking around where a family's living and you're like, ah, yes. Excellent. I could live here. Yes. Sarah, what kind of adventure are you having right now? I was getting my Bible out of my car. <laughs> that's, uh, that's what I was doing. <laughs> hey, I was just looking around where a family's living and be like, ah, yeah. That's it. Is. I could live here, yes. <laughs> oh, we're getting uh, feedback. <laughs> I was getting my Bible out of my car. <laughs> well, good job. Good job. Well, hey, we're going to go ahead and get started. And so, uh, um, hey, I do just want to thank you. I want to welcome you guys um, to, to being here. Hey, Dan, yeah. I think we're getting feedback from your computer from the recording. Wow. Yeah. Good job. Good job. Um, okay, hold on. Let me see if I can find that. Yeah, Bye for technical difficulties. Well, hey, this is why we practice these things. They find it. Hey, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, boom. That should be fixed now. Sorry about that. Um, switch over. Switch over. Sorry, by the way, it's a force of habit for me where where I have the mic off because uh, in classes I tend to have parents come in and stuff, and so I just meet. So I apologize. <laughs> well, hey, we're gonna we're jump on in. We we're recu recording this live on YouTube, um, and so for people who can't make it, they'll be able to go there and, and see and hear this. And for future years as well, that uh, can help people in preparing, um, especially stuff like this. Um, just you know, this is a whole new way. We're trying to figure out how to get all of you guys ready to leave. Um, we're so excited. We you're gonna be fine. Like you don't need all this. Um, to be able to lead. You're, you've had great examples of that and leaders that you've watched and uh, you've had great experiences and you're really qualified. So we're not so worried about you, but we do want to be uh, just to come along and help out as much as we can in, in how we lead and how we prepare. And, uh, and this is something we haven't done well in the past. So we're, this has also been a big step, a big plans for us to, to come alongside you guys better anyway. So, um, so hopefully this will be, be getting that. Um, the structure today is we're going to spend a few minutes. Uh, I'm going to share a few things, kind of big picture perspective. And then um, we have a couple other folks that are coming alongside to share some things as well. And then the last kind of 15 minutes of this time, we'll break into community groups. And so whichever community group you're in, you'll be in there, get a chance to meet your coaches or one of your coaches. Um, that'll be kind of walking through, helping you along as we go here. If you're on the servant team and not in the community group, there's a group for you as well to kind of go hang out in and um, but that's kind of the schedule and some things that we'll be doing, but let me pray for our time and then uh, we'll jump on in. Uh, dear Heavenly Father, I pray um, just for this opportunity that we have just to be together, um, to worship you, to celebrate. Um, and uh, Father, we pray for this next year um, because it's not about us. It's not about what gifts we have and what gifts we bring. It's about um, engaging people with the gospel, loving them. Um, and encouraging them and, and pouring into other people. And so, um, Father, we just do. We pray that you would lead us, that you would guide us. And we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. Um, well, hey, um, we're going to go ahead and jump in. If you have your Bibles, and you might, or can look it up online or whatever, we're going to look um, at two passages just real quickly. And uh, uh, so the first one is... A world famous passage is one of my favorites, Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. So we're going to look at that first. Um, and so if you can open up to that, Matthew 28, verses 18 through 20. Matthew 28, 18 through 20. And it says this. Thanks, whoever's putting that in the, the group chat, too. That's helpful. <laughs> uh, it says, verse 18, and Jesus came and said to them, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you always to the end of the age. 
Um, so for some of you, that might be a very familiar passage. Um, when I thought about the idea of what are we doing, like what is crew about, what are we doing? Um, I felt like the first question should be, what did God desire for us to do? What was his heart? What is his passion? Um, and so this is written and spoken by Jesus as he is getting ready. He's died on the cross. He's resurrected from the dead. And this is kind of the last little shindig with his disciples as he kind of prepares them for the next steps as he's gone. The last time he's there. And so when someone you know knows they're about to pass away, you know, they often say some of the most important things if they're able to do that. And so uh, we really think this is, this is Jesus really trying to prepare us um, for what he thought was most important. And I think this is not just for the disciples. This isn't just for a little group of missionaries. This is for believers to carry on. And his call was very simple. Jesus spoke to them. And he said, hey, I want you to, to go. And, uh, and one of the first things when I think about for us um, as followers of Jesus, when he's commanded us, the idea of going is he's given us something to do. Uh, he hasn't just said, hey, I want you to be a, a believer and trust in me so you can just hang out and relax and just wait till I come back. I have things for you to do. I have a role for you to play in this. And so when the very first thing Jesus says, he gives us a command. He says, I want you to go. But what does he want us to do? He wants us to make disciples. Um, you know, and, and so that's, we're not just talking about converts. You know, sometimes people are like, hey, I just want someone to say a prayer and boom, we're good. But, but what he says, I want you to make disciples. I want you to pour your life into other people. I want you to invest in them. And, uh, you know, and so that, and, and he wants us to do that in the people that are near us, that are around us. He wants to do that in people that in other places as well, but uh, to invest in making disciples um, that would make disciples. And so our goal is once again, not to have a cool Christian club on campus, but it is to take the gospel and pass that on to people who will live as disciples, which the disciples did what Jesus did. Um, and then they will go and teach that to other disciples who will do that to other disciples and multiply that out. And so um, that's incredibly important when it comes to the picture of that. And so he says, I want you to go. I want you to make disciples. Who does he want us to make disciples with? And he says, all nations. Um, and that is everyone, obviously we know. And it's not even just uh, geographic nations. It's also people groups, um, you know, different races. I mean, it is every person. And so, I mean, it is so crucial for us to think about when we think about this year, we think, I'm not just trying to make disciples of people who look like me and act like me and believe like me and are that I'm the most comfortable with all the time. Like God has called us to go to make disciples of every person, of every tribe, every tongue, every nation. Um, and that's so crucial to his heart. How do we do that? Like, what, what does that look like? He says, by baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit and teaching. So baptizing and teaching are two huge things. And I think about baptizing, like, man, that's when you're declaring, hey, I am a follower of Jesus. Like that's that is who I am. I identify with Jesus. I am now washed in his blood. I'm declaring this to you that you might know that. Um, and then teaching them is more than just coming to Christ and saying, I'm a follower of Jesus, that we're teaching them all the things that God and his word have taught us. And so that's a crucial element of our community groups and our ministry is, is helping people declare and come to know Jesus, but also to grow in that um, in incredible ways. And then, uh, and then, uh, just a quick little shot. People say, hey, the Trinity is not in the Bible. Just uh, one of those references right here, right? In this one verse, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, I mentioned they never name him Trinity. That's our own word, but a, a beautiful picture. And then last with that is, and it says that he doesn't leave us to go just do that in isolation, but he says, I will be with you, that, that we are not alone. And so as we step in, I'll, if you hear anything from me today and from any of our uh, other people are going to teach, and um, you have God and his spirit with you. That is all that you need. You do not need all these fancy things from crew. You do not need um, to have it all figured out. You don't have to go and rescue your community group or save people, or you just need the Lord and his power working through your spirit. He is with you and you have everything you need. And so, man, we are so excited that that's um, true with you. So that is what God has said to all believers. I believe said, Hey, this is what you're to do. But now um, we want to look at another verses then well then why? Like, what does that look like? And so the next verse we're going to look at is 2 Corinthians chapter 5, um, verses 17 through 21. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, 17 through 21. And if God says, hey, this is what I want you to do to make disciples, this is why he wants us to do that. Um, and I'll read that. It says, verse 17, 2 Corinthians 5, verse 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. 
The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ, God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. Therefore, we are ambassadors for Christ, God making his appeal through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ to be reconciled to God. For our sake, he made him to be sin who knew no sin, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. And that's kind of a wild little passage in a lot of ways. And so I just want to draw this kind of out a little bit, um, just so we have a picture of it. So I have my little fancy whiteboard here. So I'm just writing this word. If you can see that. I better turn off my fancy background so you can see my messy room. Um, but the question why is, is a huge question. Why do we do this? Why has he called us to do that? I don't know if you can see that. Boom. So that's why. Um, and what he begins to unpack here is it's, this is really our identity. He says in verse you know, 17, right there, um, says, therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation, the oldest past. So he's, he's talking about this is who we are. And, uh, and so that's just a beautiful picture. Um, and so in 2 Corinthians, and it's, uh, I think I'm in the passage at 5, 17, 21. Um, he's really saying right here. So it comes down to the cross. Um, what Jesus has died, how he has brought us into relationship with him. Um, and so many of us, and most of us should, you know, have a pretty good idea to say, hey, how Jesus is really the thing that rescued us. Like we came to Christ and that his death on the cross and his resurrection has done really two things for us. And so I'm going to write two arrows in there. Um, and so the first thing that he has done for us in this is that in verse 17, he's made us a new creation. We're new. And that is a huge deal. Like, it doesn't matter what your past has been. It doesn't matter, you know, where you've been, how good of a leader you've been or how bad. It doesn't matter what your summer looks like this summer. What is true of you is that you are a new creation, um, that, that you are loved and that you are walking by faith. It is by faith you've been saved, not by your works. And so that's huge. Um, and so that's the first thing that is there. But the second thing that is true of us as leaders is that it says here we're also ambassadors. Um, let me draw, boom. This is my fancy attempt at drawing the world. But So he says, not only are you new, a new creation that I've made you new, but you're also an ambassador. You're chosen by me to go and impact and to engage the world, to, to help other people who might not know me and know who Christ is. Um, and so our identity is we're totally new. It's not based on what we do, but it's based upon who he is and what he declares an identity. And it's also based on what he's, because of who we are, we're, we're now ambassadors. And those things are not separated. You can't do one without the other. Um, you can't be an ambassador if you're not a new creation. And if you're a new creation, you are an ambassador. And so once again, it's not this training. It's not all the special things that are going to make you um, be what you need to be. It's going to be actually God at work in you, but he has made you and trained you. And so I wanted to start out with that because I feel like it's really important that we um, understand that we are, you know, that we're needing to trust and walk deeply in the Lord um, because he's the one who's made us new and he is the one um, who is sending us as his ambassadors, his representation to be a disciple maker. And uh, so to, to dig in that some more, um, I've asked Abby to come and uh, to, to share with us. And so she'll take over the screen here in a second, but uh to just dig into that. And Abby's incredible. She, we're celebrating Abby graduated. So she's out of here. She's been an incredible coach and leader um, here in our ministry. And so we're not letting her get away. She's in town. We'll, we'll bring her back for as often as we can for things. But, but this is kind of an area of just thinking of your identity, who you are in Christ is an area that she's um, learned so much on that God has just worked incredible things in her heart. And she has just a heart and passion for. And so when this is one of the topics, she was like, man, I would be thrilled to teach on that. And so, so Abby, I'm going to let you take it away. And, uh, you share your heart. I finally unmuted myself. Hi. Um, yeah, God has really taught me a ton about um, what it means to place my identity in him while I've been in college. Um, and so I'm really glad to get to share just a little bit of what he's taught me about that. Um, and the way I kind of think of it is that placing your identity in something, whatever it is, 
kind of means that you rely on it completely for um, your value, for the direction of your life, um, for the security of just who you are and being comfortable. And um, you rely on it for everything. Um, and so something that I've struggled with and that I've seen a lot of people struggle with is placing your identity in other people and in the works that we can do. And not just like biblical works, but um, more like the uh, like schoolwork and achievement and success and being the best at everything that we can be, you know? Um, so I'm just gonna talk tonight just a little bit about contrasting that with placing your identity in Jesus. Um, so we'll start off with um, some scripture. I'm going to read to y'all Matthew chapter 7, verses 24 through 27. And it's pretty short, so you don't have to flip there if you don't want to. Um, as soon as I can. Uh, there we go. Okay. It says, everyone then, this is Jesus talking. Everyone then who hears these words of mine and does them will be like a wise man who built his house on the rock. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house, but it did not fall because it had been founded on the rock. And everyone who hears these words of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand. And the rain fell and the floods came and the winds blew and beat against that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. Um, so that passage really contrasts placing our identity in Christ and placing it in other things. And so I'll start with the other things. When we do that, it's like building our house on the sand. It's really insecure and not reliable. Um, when we, um, something that I did a lot growing up was trying to chase after other people's value or the way they valued me and their affection and their appreciation of me. And I was placing my identity in other people. Um, all of my time and mental energy was about, hey, how can I please this person? How can I make them like me more? How can I be appreciated more by them? Um, but the Bible tells us that the love of other people is not secure enough for us to rely upon. Um, and we can't place our identity in that and be really secure. Um, Romans 5 says, um, for one will scarcely die for a righteous person, even though perhaps for a good person, one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So other people's love, even if you're great and even if people love you, it's still not secure enough as Jesus' love is because only Christ's love is perfect for us. Um, and the Bible also says a lot about trying to build our identity based on being the great person, the one who achieves everything and does all the wonderful work and is the great student or the, the great leader, or the great minister or whatever it is, whatever your achievement is, it's still not something we can place our identity in. Um, and Ephesians 2, it's, it's pretty well known, but it speaks to that a lot, um, where it says, um, for by grace, you have been saved through faith. And this is not your own doing. It's the gift of God not a result of works so that no one may boast. And so if we can't place our identity in other people because they don't love us perfectly and we can't place our identity in ourselves achieving everything, then the thing that we can place our identity in and be completely secure is Jesus. Um, and that is building our house on the rock. That is trusting what Christ says about us that is trusting that his words are true and his words are the ones to follow. Um, only Jesus's love is completely secure. And um, a really key passage about that is in Ephesians 1, uh, verses 3 through, um, wait, where is it? Well, hang on. Yeah, verses 3 through 17. Okay, my bad. It's a little longer, but I'll go ahead and read it. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us in Christ with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places, even as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, that we should be holy and blameless before him. In love, he predestined us for adoption to himself as sons through Jesus Christ. According to the purpose of his will, 
to the praise of his glorious grace with which he has blessed he has forgiven our trespasses wait i'm skipping things with which he has blessed us in the beloved in him we have redemption through his blood the forgiveness of our trespasses according to the riches of his grace which he lavished upon us in all wisdom and insight making known to us the mystery of his will according to his purpose which he set forth in Christ as a plan for the fullness of time to unite all things in him, things in heaven and things on earth. In him, we have obtained an inheritance, having been predestined according to the purpose of him who works all things according to the counsel of his will, so that we who are the first to hope in Christ might be to the praise of his glory. In him, you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation and believed in him were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it to the praise of his glory. So I know that was a long and Paul uses run on sentences, so it can be a little hard to understand, but it's, it's so rich and tells us so much about our identity in Jesus. Um, and it, I mean, it says right off the bat how we don't have to work or look from value, look for value from other people or from our works, um, because God chose us in His perfect love before the beginning of time. God chose us as His children to be adopted and redeemed to Himself. Um, and that is that is by like when we believe in Jesus. Um, but another key thing in this passage is how it doesn't say anything about anything we do. Um, all throughout the passage, it says in him, by him, through his plan. It uses the word he and him and his a lot. And so that's just so key to understand that by Jesus and only by Jesus, we have attained our salvation. And that's according to God's will and God's work and not our own. Um, and Another key portion is at the very end um, in verses 13 and 14. Um, Paul is basically saying that when we believe in God's promises of the gospel, um, that Jesus sacrifice alone is our salvation. Um, the Holy Spirit seals and guarantees our salvation. Um, and, and that's a seal like marking us, not just like a piece of tape, but it's like a wax seal, like a king would use to mark us as genuine and to just like completely seal it until the right person can save us, which is Jesus in Revelation. Um, and so he completely seals that and having our salvation sealed by Jesus's perfect love and his sacrifice means that it is completely secure. Um, there's nothing we can do to change our salvation. Um, nothing we say or do can make God love us any more than he already does. And nothing that we say or do can make God love us any less. Um, and so that, that's something that is so key, not just in being a leader, but in being a follower of Christ is understanding that we are imperfect people and we are imperfect leaders, but we're invited to place our identity solely in Jesus and rest in him to love us perfectly to love our community groups perfectly. Um, and I mean, we pray that he will work through us to be ambassadors of the gospel to UAH. Um, and so that's, God's really laid a lot of that on my heart throughout college. Um, just understanding more about what it means to completely rest in the work that he's already done and know that it's, it's not me who, it's not up to me to do everything. It's up to, um, it's up to Jesus, who is the king over everything. Uh, that's about all I have. And I'm not sure what's next. Dan, you're muted. And you're muted. Uh, and you're muted. I missed on the button. Um, hey, Abby, thank you so much. That's incredible. And, um, and it's just free. Like, I love how you said it. Freedom comes in knowing that God loves us and that we're secure in that. And, that allows us to lead because otherwise I think we'd be freaking out or think we have to do it just right. Or uh, here, and this happens all the time. People say, I can't lead because I'm not good enough. Like I've, I've got some scenarios. I got some things I'm struggling with, um, you know, and, and the reality is, is that God just loves you. 
um, that that is not why you were chosen to follow Jesus, and that is not chosen why, why you're necessarily chosen to lead. Now, our hope and our prayer is that as God, as you go through the semester and, and as things pop up, you're like, oh man, I'm struggling here, I'm wrestling here. We want you to know there's complete freedom that we love you, um, but also because of uh, being ambassadors that of who he's called us to be, we want to, to deal with that sin too. And so we hope that there are safe places and safe people for any of us, any of the coaches. Um, you can call Abby and talk to Abby, you know, like just say, hey, I've got an area I just really need to work through um, because we're going to love you and our desire is for you to walk deeply with the Lord and be free of those things. And when Satan begins to put sin into our lives and we feel like we can't deal with it, then that's his way of trying to infringe upon our identity, that this, that you aren't a child of God, that you aren't completely loved and free. You have to earn it and that you fail to do that or, you know, and those things just aren't true. And so we want to stand as leaders on the identity of what is true about who we are in Jesus. And we know we're going to fail. And as we do that, we want to confess that to one another. We want to help one another, hold one another up and, and grow through those things so that more and more we become more and more like Jesus in that process. And so, Abby, thank you so much uh, about that and uh, sharing that. We appreciate that. And next we're going to have Jacob. And Jacob is going to kind of dig into um, some of the kind of the, the things that help us to walk with God, the things that help us stay near to God to, um, to walk as new creations. And so, Jacob, if you're out there somewhere, I'll let you kind of steal the show and, and go for it. I'm here. Um, I'm already putting a couple of verses in the chat. I might share my notes on my screen and post them later because I have too many verses um, to go through right now. Um, but I'm just going to pray briefly to start this. Um, God, thank you for this day and for all the people that are here. Um, I pray that you would, um, God, you're so incredibly good. I pray that you would transform each and every one of us to be a, a clearer image of you. In Jesus' name. So, um, sorry about the mess in the background. Um, it's been a busy day. But anyways, um, I was asked to talk about um, basically three topics. Um prayer, quiet time, and um, walking with the Holy Spirit. Um, but the overarching theme of all of that is walking with the God that you know is God. Um, it's something that we've already talked a lot about, um, and Ephesians is a great verse for that. Um, but I think that there are some more practical things that um, – I'd like to try to dig into with this. Um, so the first thing that I reference is Hebrews 12, 1 and 2, um, where it tells us that Jesus is the author and perfecter of our faith. So prayer, quiet time, walking with the Holy Spirit, those are all different phrases used to refer us to God in trying to pursue him and seek him and spend time with him. Um, and the reason that's so important is because God is the perfecter of our faith. Um, as we draw closer to him, he will continue to change us. And it's a beautiful reality that it's not something that we have to do. Um, and with pride and other sins in my life, I, there are a lot of them that I got to a point where I couldn't, I recognized that I couldn't change them in myself. So I prayed that he would change me. And it's, it was a very powerful reality and a very good comfort. Um, and that's also reiterated in 1 John um, 1, 8 through 10. Um, if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. And that's verse 8. Um, the reason I included verse 8 is because um, as leaders, I think, a lot of the leaders around me that I've seen grown them, grow the most is those that have been really open with the leaders around them. And um, that takes time and that's hard. But I want to encourage you guys, um, as I'm sure your faith is genuine, you will grow so much faster if um, you're doing it in community and recognizing the people around you love and care for you and hope to see you grow. As community group leaders, we're all choosing to invest ourselves into the students around us. 
and all of the people around you, if you <laughs> look around all the screens here, um, each and every one of them is um, someone that you can walk closely with. And that's part of the reason why we're in teams. Um, it's not supposed to be one, a one-man show. Um, anyways, um, verse 9 then goes on to say, if we confess our sins, he's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Which is, again, that promise that he will transform us. Um, and it's a very exciting promise. Um, so as for very practical things to go with that, um, John really 14 through 16, but specifically 14, 16 through 30 and 16, seven through 15, talk a good bit about the Holy spirit. Um, and he is our teacher help for comforter. Um, he is God in us and he is here to help it transform us and to work through us um, and recognizing that you know we couldn't we couldn't save ourselves um, from our sin and we can't transform ourselves even if we were to say we're forgiven today um, I don't think any of us would be able to say okay now I'm going to be perfect <laughs> but but God loves us enough um, to work in us and through us. And because of that, we're never any more or any less worthy for him to do so. Um, and as we recognize ourselves as in need of him in that way, um, we begin to see that the work that we're doing, what we're doing in leading a community group, isn't, we're not reaching, reaching our campus and just you know, saving people. It's, it's God's work that we're merely, we're given the incredible honor of participating in. And if we recognize it as God's work in each of their lives, that Christ is the perfecter, author and perfecter of each individual Christian's faith that we're reaching out to, there's, there's nothing more natural than to fall on our knees and say, God, thank you for what you've done continue to work. Um, and with that, I'd like to talk a little bit about um, prayer. So um, I'm just going to share my screen and show some of um, my notes. Uh, can you guys see that? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. So, um, and this is just because I have too many verses to type out right now, but um, one of the most important things in prayer is I know a lot of people feel one of two ways, like it's throwing a list of um, things that you want or hope for up, up to the sky or um, that it's something that you can hardly do that you're not good enough for. And both of those are such total and complete lies. Um, in uh, Romans 8.15, um, Paul writes that um, God <laughs> loves us in such a way that we, <laughs> we run to him and we cry out, Abba, Father, which is a very, it's like calling him dad. It's a very intimate and personal thing, and it's an honor. Um, but it's one that we can take confidently knowing his love for us. Um, and <laughs> knowing that he loves us in that way, um, we're told multiple times that we can bring our burdens to God. Um, in 1 Peter 5, 7 and Philippians 4, 6 and 7, um, we're... <laughs> we're told to cast your burdens on the Lord because he cares for you. Um, and I can't tell you how many times that there have been difficult moments or difficult days that I've, I felt really down. Like I didn't know if I would be able to complete all the things that were required of me or 
um, didn't think I was doing good enough. But um, praying, God, I know that everything is in your hands has been such a comfort that one of my most difficult days in the first half of last semester, um, thing after thing was going wrong with um, my lab, my lab work, and all sorts of other things that I wasn't able to prepare for. And as I kept praying, God, I know this is in your hand. By the end of the day, I was stunned when I walked into my house and thought that today was a good day. Um, and that's something that only recognizing God's control could have really given me in that moment. Um, Jesus directly tells his disciples um, to seek first the kingdom of God and all other things will be added unto them. Like, God is, God is good enough to transform our desires. Um, one thing that I want to say along those lines is with the quiet time, it's, it's okay if you don't feel like or aren't excited for praying and spending time in the word um, because that desire will grow as you get closer to God and you can pray, God, please help me to want this. And he'll, he'll give you that desire sooner or later. Um, and as you continue to seek the kingdom of God, um, the things that you pursue, your heart will start to break for what his breaks for. And you'll start to want the things that he wants. And um, in First John, I'm not sure where it is on here, but... In First John uh, 5, 14 through 15, here it is. Um, if we ask something in, in Jesus' name um, that God wants, he won't deny us any good thing. Um, he's a good father. Um, and that's the confidence that we have in him. Um, God loves us so deeply. Um, I also have a good few things about the Lord, Lord's Prayer and parallel verses. Why we need to begin the prayer with um, praise, because we need to recognize both God's love for us and his power um, to bolster our faith so that we can come confidently before the throne of God. Um, God is so... <laughs> incomprehensibly good um the greatest thing that we could pursue um if you hear anything from this um what i want to tell you is this god loves us so incredibly deeply and he wants everything that is good for us and he will he will change us for our good and for the good of those around us so draw close closer to god so that um, as you continue to walk deeply with him, um, others will be able to pour in and to be able to recognize and learn from um, all that he's teaching you. Um, I don't want to go over on time, so I'll stop it here. But God is so incredibly good. And I'm so excited as you guys continue to grow and continue to try to start to lead in this position. It's so challenging in such a great way to continue to develop as, as a Christian and as a follower of God. Um, so pray for your community groups. Um, continue to draw close. Um, and that's really what I have to say. Well, sweet. Man, thank you, Jacob. Appreciate that so much. And I know I gave you a pretty broad bunch of topics to, to kind of race through, but as, as we think about you guys leading this next year, um, man, this summer is so crucial, such a crucial time to pursue after God, to spend time with him, um, to trust in him, to walk with him, to enjoy the word, um, to, to be empowered by his spirit. And then we, we talk about prayer, not just so that, I mean, you know that you're supposed to pray, but like but really prayer is just intimately talking with God and knowing him. And so to be spending time this summer, just really getting to know your father um, so that when you get on campus in the fall and uh, that when he speaks or points that you know him so well that you kind of already know what he's thinking. You already know where he's at. You know what his heart is and you're just responding to that. 
Um, and so over the summer, really spend some like spending time. And so one of the things we're going to do to help you with that is um, we do have coaches that are going to be coaching all the different community group leaders. Um, these coaches are also going to start connecting with you even over the summer just to, to get to know you a little bit, just so that when we hit the ground running in the fall, there's already a relationship and connection there. You're not meeting your coach for the first time in person um, or at least virtually we'll do that now. And so, um, but also just, man, we want to just as a community be encouraging one another to be spending time in the word, to be growing. Um, and so one of the things your coach is going to start asking about is, hey, what is, what's your plan for the summer as far as spending time in the word? And, and it doesn't have, we don't have a plan for you. We're not going to tell you what to do, but like how um, are you going to spend time enjoying and pursuing after him? How can we be praying together um, as a community group and for one another, praying for one another and praying for the people we're going to? Um, next month, one of the things that we're going to spend some time is talking about how do you start a community group in a new area and engaging people. And, a, and the big piece of that we're going to look at first is praying, learning how to pray and prepare the soil of where God is calling us to do that. And so, so that'll be an element we'll talk about next month coming in that. But what I want to do right now is uh, get out of kind of the talk to you kind of mode and really separate you into your different community groups. So if you are a coach, you're going to be headed over here in a second and I'll, I'll I should have everyone split up right. Um, but I'll split everyone into different community group rooms. You'll have a coach and they have a few different questions um, that we'll paste again in the chat just that, so you can look at that. Um, if you are not a coach, um, then uh, if you're like leading in our servant team in some kind of way or doing something else, there's a, just another group for that. I'll put you in that. Um, there's not going to be any coach to coach in that. So you're on your own because I'll be meeting with Robert and Isaiah, Isaac. But, uh, um, but just get chances to talk about what you're looking forward to and stuff like that. But this is a chance to get to know each other, to celebrate, ask any questions you have of your coach, and then, and then we'll spend. And you're going to be there for about 15 minutes, and then you guys can wrap up. And when you're done, you're, you're free and out of here. So I'm going to pray for us, and then I'm going to hit the button and send us to our community groups. Any questions, though, real quick before um, I pray? Please. Um, you can ask your coach if you have any questions. Well, dear Lord, I thank you for these leaders, um, for them given this, being gracious with their time to let us come hang out and, uh, and spend this with them. Lord, this is about you. It's not about us. May you be honored. May you be glorified. And Lord, I just, uh, the prayer I've had this week, I don't know why, but it's just been over and over. It's like, would you do more, exceedingly more than we can ever ask or imagine this next year? Man, what would it look like to see 100 people come to know Jesus Christ next year? What would it look like to see, you know, 50 new people ready to start discipling? Not even just lead Bible studies, but say, I'm ready just to start investing in someone in my class or one of my, my sister at home or somewhere. Um, Father, we just want to pray and trust you for things that are beyond our ability to manage it, produce it, um, and even, <laughs> even know what to do with it. Like the, the, we would just have to come together and just pray and say, Lord, what do we do? There's 3,000 new believers today. What do we do? Um, would you lead us? And so we pray um, all these things as we go to breakouts, and uh, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. You are now getting slowly sent over there, I hope. Hope, hope, hope. Dun, 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 ba -dun, ba -dun, dun, dun, dun. Yeah, you're going. Go, go, go. Uh, okay, so on a sun. Looks like I got a few of you. How's everyone doing out there? Anyone not go to where they thought they were going? No, I'm doing good. Okay, all good. Um, boom. So Sam, where, where are you supposed to be? I should be in Franz, I think. All right. I'll send you over to, to Franz then. Sorry, I don't, I don't know why you didn't get sent there, but you're sent there now. Austin, you're... Hey. You're on your way. And then anyone else there? Everyone else? Huh. 